good day and uh, welcome everyone. Um, my uh, pleasure and uh, uh, honor to, to host uh, Rudolf from Namibri. He is a very well known professional um, uh, in the reinsurance uh, market. I'll give Rudolf an opportunity to introduce himself and give us a glimpse of uh, who Rudolf is, his personal life, and also his professional career. Uh, good day. Uh, my name is Rudolf Mabindu. I'm the general manager of insurance at uh, Namibia Reinsurance Corporation, uh, widely known as uh, Namibri. I'm married uh, and have children. So that's basically me, myself. And, uh, and maybe just to touch on my professional uh, career in uh, how I landed in, uh, in insurance. I have started my career in the financial sector, working for a commercial bank in Namibia, then moved to regulator as a bank regulator. Thereafter, I moved back to the commercial bank, banking industry, where I have uh, spent uh, roughly six years and then moved to insurance regulator known as Mamfisa in Namibia. That's where my career started in insurance. A very rich history there. Uh, and given your background in the regulator's office, uh, if I can uh, just catch you blind there, what would you say was the most important lesson for you, uh, which helped you when you came into the insurance industry in terms of uh, what to do and what not to do? The most important take from a regulatory uh, uh, framework is compliance. Mm. Um, any type of compliance where company or an insure, either insurance or banking have to comply with, either with minimum requirements or whatever sort of requirement the legislation require. So most of uh, uh, regulatory framework um, use legislation to regulate the industry. So mm. compliance is the is, is the most important aspect that I, I I took as an asset from the regulatory framework. Yes, and and you know most of us when we think of compliance and we think of the people in the regulator's office, we have this imagination of policemen type of people. Given that you are coming from that office, give us give us an idea of how naturally, I mean, people in the regulator's office are and how should other people outside the regulator's office treat them when interacting with them? So regulators are normal, normal, normal individuals. Uh, in some country, they also come from the, the industry, so they know the, the what entail to be in an insurance or in banking environment. What they doing? They have a mandate to for, fulfill in terms of the legislation, in terms of minimum requirements, because there is certain thing that as an insurance company have to comply with in order for you to operate, because you are dealing with um, public funds mm -hmm. out there, and the main thing is to make sure that the public funds are in safe hands. So they are normal individuals. Uh, yes. uh, when you see them, you see your friends, your family member, or uh, you, your wife, or whoever operating on, in the in the regulatory uh, office. Mm. Mm. So in other words, naturally, they should be they should be rapport and cooperation with the regulator's office because. At the end of the day, their intention is to safeguard the police order's interest, and naturally, we need to we need to comply and make sure that our our our, our clients are also secured. Yes, yes, and there is certain uh, parameters, uh, even where uh, public can go and uh, uh, put your complaints if the insurance company does not. Uh, honor their obligations mm. uh, for the regulator to see whether it's in line with the contractual obligation that uh, 
the, the public health undertook with an insurance company. So there is certain parameter there mm. with how the one can can operate and seek uh, some advice from the regulator. Thank you so much for that insight. I think I think it will be very very useful for uh, for most of our listeners here. Now, given your career background, you have been to the banking sector, to the regulator's office, the reinsurance market. Which part of, of your career history would you wish to, 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 to live or to relive again and why? So they say, say once you have spent a year in insurance, yeah. you will never get out of insurance. Uh, and I can testify for myself. <laughs> I've been here now for almost 11 years. Yes, uh, there is no single day which is uh, you will be challenged with different type of uh, doll uh, things on on daily basis. I think the your, the insurance industry is a very very good industry to work with because you it's very dynamic. Mm. Uh, you 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 solve issues on daily basis, especially whenever there is a claim. Uh, yeah. Not all claims are the same mm. Mm. every claim have its own di- uh, dynamics yeah yeah i mean the, the insurance industry is, is is one vast industry and there are a lot of professions that that come in to make the business work maybe from your position as a general manager how uh, can you explain to someone who is young uh, about the opportunities in the insurance sector because people come from various academic backgrounds uh, and also the varying interest as far as their career paths are concerned. How can you assure a young person maybe wants to be an engineer or wants to be um, uh, in the medical field about um, opportunity? To encourage the young young people to pursue a career in the insurance sector. Because if you look at our sector currently, they say, they, 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 there is a huge gap between, uh, or one would say, it's, a, it's an aging sector, mm, um, mm. whereby the, y- the young generation are sitting very far or at the bottom of the the, 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 the industry starting in, and mm, mm. the guys that I experience are, are aging, uh, to be honest, and uh, one of these, even within five years or ten years. Mm. Uh, we need to look at succession. So there is an mm. opportunity for for skills development for young uh, young persons in mm. insurance, and mm. it's a very dynamic uh, uh, sector where innovation, technology, and everything is taking place. Yeah. And the, the the young population is also dynamic in their own way. Mm. So, mm the tech that they have uh, on, 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 on tip of their fingers. So this make it very easy for them to, to penetrate. Uh, I, I think there is an opportunity for young uh, mm. young person to move into because of the gap. And the industry uh, really need to develop uh, young people to start taking up a position in the hiring of uh, the sector. Uh, very, very good point there, uh, Rudolf. And there, there, there are industry leaders who are listening here. You have spoken about the skills that is that is looming, uh, and you have talk, spoken about the need for intervention to ensure that the youngsters are also coming up. What are some of the practical mechanisms that the industry can can put in place? And here we are talking about intentional leadership. There is a problem that we can see that there's a problem looming in terms of the skills gap and the need for intentional leadership for the current leaders to realize the need to fix that. What are some of the practical steps that can be taken? So at, at national level, there must be policy geared towards instituting a program or professional program into tertiary institution. Um, so that's, mm. that's key. That's, that's very important. Should that fail, um, I think the industry has an obligation to partner with um, uh, tertiary institution 
in yeah. order to create professional qualification in a jurisdictions or in a country mm -hmm. like Namibia. So as an industry member, we need to try to push and fund the development of uh, professional qualification through uh, uh, a tertiary institution. I think that's, that's my take on it. Uh, from where I am, uh, uh, my, my, my picture of Namibia is a, it's a desert country and with a desert, desert country, we associate it with a lot of heat. Um, does that affect the risks on the ground and how, how do you deal with it? Normally, uh, most of the part which is, uh, uh, which is the desert, mm. No economic activity is taking place place on some of those areas. Okay. Ever where there is agricultural activity, where agricultural take, uh, activity taking place, um, there is certain elements what the farmers are doing in order to keep the heat away from their crops production. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is that like indigenous knowledge or technology? Is coupled with indigenous as well as uh, technology. Uh, mm. Mm. Okay. Um, thank you. I think people out there would want to research more on that and find out how exactly are the farmers uh, are doing it. Uh, any last words from you? From you? I think the most important part uh, being in insurance or reinsurance mm. is networking. Yeah. Uh, once you have network and you have maintained that relationship, there is a benefit that you, whatever business or whatever business dealing you will have, it mm. will be a legitimate business. And and in insurance, we there is a talk of uh, or, or we base our 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 business on trust, which is. Uh, what we are saying, utmost good faith. And utmost good faith is nothing else than the relationship that you have and coupled with, with network that you have mm. in the industry. So whatever yes. business you are getting or writing will be a genuine business from the industry. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, so uh, my last word is that... Uh, Namibia, Namibian insurance industry is a very profitable um, uh, industry. Should anyone wish to invest or cover risk in Namibia, mm. I'm more than welcome to do so. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rudolf. And uh, thank you so much for, for the um, wisdom that you have shared with us and the information that you have shared with us. Uh, and I wish you all the best in your career ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Simba, and uh, enjoy your, the rest of the day. Thank you.